Okay, let's do solutions to the problem set. So here's a couple of warm-up questions that are just intended to get at do you know how to look at this and know what it means. Um, so let's assume our two-dimensional array looks like this. These numbers down the left-hand side are the locations of the rows. They are the row indexes. These numbers are the column indexes because each vertical uh, stack of numbers here is a column. So if I display array 0, 0, that would be row 0 here by column 0 here. So that would be 3. So the part I have highlighted would be 3. And then after I get that value from the array, after that I add 2 for an answer of 5. Here, the 0 plus 2 is inside that first set of brackets. So whatever that number is inside the first set of brackets, that's the row index. So here we've got a row index of 0 plus 2, which is just 2. So that's this row down here. And then we're still in column 0 here, and so that value is 44. So the important thing to notice in this question is the location of the plus 2 matters. If it's outside the brackets, that means you get the value out of the array first and then add the number to whatever was in the array. Here, if the plus 2 is inside the brackets, that's either changing the row index or the column index, those numbers that you're looking up inside the array. So for this next part, I've got i, and i is looping from 0 up to 2, because it's less than 3, so it never gets to 3. And then I'm, just, and then I'm using i right here as my row number, and the column is always 0. So the first time through the loop, i is 0, so we'll be accessing location 0, 0, which is 3. And then the next time through the loop, i is 1, so we'll be accessing row 1, column 0 which is 9. And then the next time through the loop, we'll access 44, because i is going through all the possible rows. So this is going to display 3, and then 9, and then 44. OK. Um, this is almost just the same. i is going from 0 to 3. But now, oops. But now, i is inside the second bracket, which is the location number for the column. So here, the row is always 0. So that means we're always in this top row. But the column numbers are changing. So we're going to go 3, and then 7, and then 2. We're not going to go all the way to 0 here, because i never actually reaches location 3. i is always less than 3. So the answer is 3, 7, 2. So 3, 7, all right, let's do this problem. Um, fill in the blanks to create the array shown here. So I see the array has three columns, and the location numbers go 0 to 2. And it's got four, sorry, these are rows, uh, three rows, 0 to 2, and four columns. So this first value is how many rows, and this second value is how many columns. So here I've got three total rows, and here I've got four total columns. Um, what might be a little bit confusing is this bracket notation. When you first create the array, you tell it how many total rows you have. But this number is actually larger than any of the location numbers. Um, and then if you're going to use the brackets to access a value that's inside the array, then you're using location numbers. So this number has a different meaning depending on whether you're creating the array the first time or you're trying to access something in an array that's already created. If you're creating it the first time, 3 is the total number of rows. If you're trying to access an array that's already been created, then whatever number is here is going to be the location number. <clears throat> All right, so let's say a is 2 and b is 1. What is this going to do? So you just have to kind of plug in what numbers you know there are. So a is 2, so that would be 2. b is 1, so that would be 1. So I know I'm going to save a value inside row 2, column 1. So I'm saving a value right here. And that value is going to be 2 times b. b is just 1. So that means I'm saving the number 2 inside row 2, column 1. So let's open this up. Here's row 2, column 1 and I'm saving the number 2 in there. All right, let's do the next one. Um, here, I, actually, I'm going to change these back here. What was this? This was B. 
Okay, so here I'm taking row two, because a is two, I'm taking row two column one. So this value is two, because I can look and see what it is in the array. And I'm taking that number two, and I'm saving it inside a new place, row zero, column one. So whenever you see this, this expression here with the array and then the brackets, that's always getting something out of the array. Or if it's on the left-hand side of an equals sign, it's telling you where you're saving something. So here I'm getting the value out of the location 2, 1. So I'm getting the value 2. And then I'm saving it into the location 0, 1, which would be here. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's 2. For this next question, I'm going to add together a and b. So that's 2 and 1. So that's 3. And then I'm saving 3 inside the array at location 0, 0. So that's up here. Here I'm taking the number three and I'm saving it in row zero, column three, which is over here, row zero, column three. So that's gonna be three over here. So here to figure out what the row number is and the column number is, I have to do a little bit of arithmetic. So A is two and B is one. So two minus one is just one. So that means I'll be in row one. 2 plus 1 is 3, so that means I'll be in column 3. So row 1, column 3 is out here, and I'm saving the number 5 into that location. So that's 5. <clears throat> and then here I've got row 3, column 3. And as you can see, that's an error because I don't have a location number 3 for rows. There is no index for three for rows. So this one would be index out of bounds error. So actually we should say five numbers in the grid. Did you write five numbers in the grid and find one error? Okay, these next questions we're gonna do in the IDE. So it says in your main method, create an array that holds integers, the name is treasure map. It should have a height of 10 and a width of 12. Let's do it. So it's supposed to hold integers. So I'll write int bracket bracket. That's how we know it's an array. It's supposed to be named treasure map. And so then I'll say new int. And now I have to say how big it is. So it said the height is 10 and the width is 12. So 10 rows, 12 columns. And I think that's gonna work. Let's just, just double check, height of 10, width of 12, treasure map, int. Okay, we're good. So now use four lines of code. Place the value nine in each of the four corners of the array. All right, so here you either have to draw a picture or you have to have a picture in your own mind. Um, we'll start with the name of the array. Zero, zero is always the upper left-hand corner. And then we're saving the value nine in there. Um, let's go ahead and display it just to see what it looks like so far. So if you remember from our other video, you can't just display the name of the variable itself because when you do, it shows you the memory location where your array is saved in memory. That's what this is. And that's not very helpful. So instead, we created our own commands to display the treasure map. Um, and that it doesn't exist right here, but I'm just going to remake it really fast. Um, so we're going to loop rows through the last row, and we're going to loop columns through the last column. Um, and this is the same as what you would have copied and pasted from the other video. So now I'm going to print array row column plus maybe a tab. And then here, whoops, here I'm just going to have empty space. Okay, so this is what you should have copied and pasted uh, from the other video. And now we can run it again. Great. So we can see 10 rows, 12 columns, and I can see a 9 in the upper left-hand corner, which was 0, 0. OK, what about the lower left-hand corner down here? Um, so if there are 10 rows, you might expect that the location number of the last row would be 10. But it's actually not, because the location numbers start at 0. 
So let's count down. This is location zero. This is location one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the pattern is the same as for array lists. The pattern is that the last location is always one smaller than the total number of locations. So there are 10 rows, and the last row is location 9. There are 12 columns, and the last column is location 11. And so that's always going to be true. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this line, except now instead of row 0, we're going to do row 9. And let's run it and see what it looks like. Wonderful. Um, I'll leave the other two for you to complete. Here for part B, it says, let's make an array called brightness grid that's 10 by 12 and holds doubles, and then use the nested loop pattern to fill the whole grid with the same value. OK, so here instead of treasure map, I'm going to call it brightness grid. And instead of being an int array, I'm going to make it an array that holds doubles. So that needs to say double, and this over here also needs to say double. Um, I forgot what size it was supposed to be, so let's look at that. Uh, okay, so I guess it's also supposed to be 10 by 12, so we don't need to change the size. So now I want to put the value 2.5 inside every single location. Um, so let's do it. Oh, now I have to change. Okay, that's fine. So if I wanted to save into each location individually, that's like a lot of lines of code. I'd have to save into the upper left, and then I could copy and paste and do it in the next row, and then I could copy and paste and do it in the next row. But 10 times 12 is 120. And so I'd need 120 lines to save every single value into all the locations in the grid. Here, let's display it and see what it looks like. So you see I've, just, I've saved 2.5 into the top three rows here. Um, but it would be too much work to save into each spot in the whole grid. And so that's why you have this loop pattern. Um, the word nested loop means that you have a loop inside a loop. So I want the row to start at row 0, and I want to go all the way to the last row, so less than 10, because the last row is 9, and so I want to be less than 9. And then for every single row, I want to loop the columns from 0 up to the last column. So that's the nested loop. For each of the rows, go through all of the columns. And that's going to visit every single spot in the array. So now I'll take my brightness grid at each row and column and assign 2.5. And now when I run it, you can see that it's full of 2.5s. OK, um, the next part of the question says modify it so that instead of saving 2.5 in every single grid location, you save a random number. So you still want to loop through all the rows and columns. That doesn't need to change. You still want the same size grid with the same name. That doesn't need to change. So the only thing that needs to change is the number you're saving. So all you need to do is replace this with a statement that generates a random value. So in this problem, we're going to prompt the user for what numbers to put in the grid. So here it says, create a 2D array to hold integers that's width 4, height 5. OK. So in this problem, I didn't tell you the name for the grid. So you can just use whatever name you want. But it should be an int array. And I called mine r for array. And then it's a height of 4 and a width of 5. No, a height of 5 and a width of 4. Was that what it was supposed to be? Yes, height of 5. So that means 5 rows. And the first number is always how many rows. So height of 5. Great. So now it says use a scanner or a J option pane. Um, I'm going to use a scanner. So scanner in equals new scanner system.in. And then I've got to import scanner. And now I'm going to print type a row number. Actually, I'm not going to, well, yeah, let's do that. 0 to 4. 
and then we'll say row, and then we'll say in dot next int. So here I'm asking them for a row, and then here I'm asking them for a column. Um, but because there's only four columns, the largest column number is three. And then I'm going to call this one call. OK, so we're asking them for a row. We're asking them for a column. And then the last thing we want is what number they should save. What number do you want to save? And that can be any number they want. And I'm just going to call that one value. So then the last step is I'll go to my array in the row they said, in the column they said, and I'll save value in there. And then I want to display the array to make sure that it worked. So let's go ahead and run that, and then we'll add the other pieces we're supposed to add. So type a row. I'm going to do row 3, column 1, value 99. And then you can see here 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's row 3, column 1. We've saved 99. Great. Um, let's go back to the question. So here it says, do this in a loop that will let them save six total numbers. Um, so you got to think of what do you want to be in the loop? I don't want this to, I don't want the loop to start up here um, because I don't want to recreate my array inside the loop. There are some things I want to do only once. So I only want to create the array once. I only want to create the scanner once. But then starting right here, this is where I want to start repeating because I want to ask them what row they want to do over and over again. So I'm going to make a for loop that starts at 0 and goes to 6. And then this is all inside my loop. And then at the end of display, I'll close the loop. And you can see that everything got automatically indented. So everything that's indented, you can tell that's part of what's getting repeated inside the loop. All right, so let's go again. So let's do 0, 0, and I'll do 99. You can see it there in the upper left-hand corner. Let's do 4, 3, and I'm going to save negative 100. So now you can see negative 100 in the lower right. Let's do 2, 2, and I'll save 87 at 2, 2. Let's do 0, 2, and I'll save 88. So you can see it seems to be working. I have a lot of flexibility over what I can put inside the array now. Um, and later on, that's going to be interesting um, because it's not so exciting to see a grid of numbers. But what if these numbers represent colors in a graphical display? Or what if they represent different images in a graphical display? Like now you have the basis for a nice game. All right, um, let's do part B. So in part B, it says, what happens if they type a number that's not valid? So if I go to row 99, column 3, and I save the number 10, here it says exception. Exception means error. In thread main, so that's just saying where the problem is happening. It's happening in my main method. And then this is the actual name of the error. java.lang.array index out of bounds exception. OK, let's think about it. Array, so that's what we're working with. Index, that means a location number. Out of bounds, that makes it sound like it's out of the boundaries. Um, and then exception means error. So if you think about this all together, array index out of bounds exception means array location number is out of bounds error. Um, and then this 99 is telling me what's the location it's trying to access that's not allowed. What's the location that's out of bounds? Um, so that's the error that we get. Um, how would we fix it? Uh, what we want to do is we want to have a for loop that will test to make sure that the row and the column are OK. So I want to make sure that my row isn't too small. So I want to make sure my row is at least greater than or equal to 0. And I also want to make sure my row isn't too big. So I want to make sure my row is smaller than, uh, how many rows were there? So there were five rows. So that means my row number needs to be smaller than five because the largest valid location is four. So now I have this nice if statement. Um, you should put in another if statement here. Well, so you could either have a second if statement or you could have, oops, 
or you could have more ands. So you could say column greater than or equal to zero and column less than. Uh, column has to be smaller than four because the largest valid column is three. Okay, so now, well, I, I was gonna have you do it, but I guess I just did it. So now I'm testing to make sure the row isn't too small and isn't too big and the column isn't too small and the column isn't too big. So as long as all those things are true, I know that I'm in bounds, it's allowed. And so I'll go ahead and do it. Otherwise, it means I'm out of bounds. So I'm gonna say your row must be zero to four, three, what, four, and call must be zero to three. Okay, so let's run it again. And now when I type 99.3, now it says your row must be 0 to 4. So it didn't crash when I said the row should be 99. Instead, the if statement caught it. And now I've gone back and it's asking me to do it again. That's it. I hope it was helpful.